Welcome to On My Way to Wealth, the podcast where busy Gen Xers can learn financial tips as they navigate life on their way to wealth. And now, please join your host, Luis Rosa. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of On My Way to Wealth. My name is Luis Rosa, and I'm your host. This is episode 60. It's a big milestone for me, so thank you all for your support, for tuning in. Big episode six zero, so uh, nice little celebration for me. This thank you all for tuning in. Today, I want to talk about the American Rescue Plan Act of two thousand and twenty one, which was just recently signed into law. You might know it as the third stimulus package. It's a one point nine trillion dollar bill that is going to include a lot of stimulus payments to individuals via direct payments credits, help to the states and municipalities, vaccine distribution, money for healthcare subsidies, aid for struggling restaurants, a whole bunch of things. Now, today I'm going to focus on a lot of things that mainly affect individuals directly, Um, but I just wanted to broadly let you know how massive this plan is. Uh, One of the things that people were disappointed that it did not include was originally there was a $15 minimum wage for the entire country in the original version, but that had to get scratched out just to do disagreements um, between the House and the Senate and moderates and conservatives and so on and so forth. So the $15 minimum wage is not in this package. So that's uh, something that they kicked the can for down the road. So let's get right into it. Let me uh, give you like a broad overview of what's included. There's a lot of good stuff here, a lot of planning opportunities that you can take advantage of as a result. For example, if you have not filed your tax return yet, you have to look at that and consider whether it makes sense for you to do so right away or for you to wait. And you'll see why in a minute. So the main thing that everybody's anticipating and very familiar with is the $1,400 checks that are coming. Now, these are going to be hidden bank accounts pretty much right away. They said uh, it's starting in, in March, just a few days after they passed it. So if you qualify, be on the lookout for that. Uh, typically, the way the IRS is going to do it is based on the most recent tax return that is filed on record. So for a lot of people, that's 2019, and they go by the adjusted gross income. So it's $1,400 for each individual and also each dependent. And this is uh, really good news because they included adult dependents and also college students and the elderly who were not included or qualified as dependents for the previous stimulus check. So this is pretty major. So if you're a family that has college age students or maybe you claim your dad or your mom in your taxes, the $1,400 is coming your way if you qualify under the income guidelines. So let me tell you a little bit about what those are. So individual filers who make as much as $75,000 will qualify for the entire amount. Now, there is a phase out between $75,000 plus. Now, the previous two stimulus payments had a a more generous phase out schedule. This one, this is another one of the compromises in the bill where the phase out comes in right away. So if you very quickly... Uh, if you make over seventy-five thousand, you could completely phase out of this stimulus package. So I'll give you what those numbers are: seventy-five thousand dollars for an individual filer, joint filer, so married couples filing jointly, one hundred and fifty thousand. So if you make less than one fifty, you get the full twenty-eight hundred dollars. Let's say for a married couple, plus the fourteen hundred dollars per dependent, whether or not they're young or even if they're adults or college-age kids. Now. Head of households, that's a different filing status. If you're a head of household, you file as a head of household. Your income threshold is actually a little higher than individuals. You can go up to $112,500 and still qualify for the full payment. Now, like I said, the phase outs kick in very quickly this round. So as an individual, if you make over $80,000, you are completely done. At the previous two stimulus payments, if you made over eighty, dollars you would still get some sort of amount, if it was a smaller amount, but you would still get something. Now it's basically under 75, you get the full 1400. Between 75 and 80, you get a reduced amount. After 80, you get zero. For married couples filing jointly, that is 150,000 or less, you get the full amount between 150 and 160. 
you get a reduced amount. After 160, you get nothing. And for head of households, 112,500 is where it starts phasing out. Uh, and again, it's it's a very short phase out after that. So this is where a planning opportunity comes into play. The IRS is going to send these payments out based on your most recent tax return on file. Now, some people made more money in the year 2020. So you want to take a look at that and see what is my adjusted gross income. If you have not filed your tax return yet, this is something that you should consider before you hit the submit button is look at your 2019 adjusted gross income. Look at your 2020 adjusted gross income. I've seen clients who actually made more money last year. Um, so then they benefit from waiting to file their tax returns because some of them were over the phase out and some of them would get a reduced amount if they followed the 2020 tax return. Now, some people are in the other scenario where their 2019 was fine, then pandemic hit, then they lost their job or lost their income, and their 2020 income is actually lower. Uh, so some people did not qualify with the 2019 income, but now they do with the 2020 income. And here's the other good news. If you were in a boat where you didn't qualify with the 2019 income for the other stimuluses, you can actually claim a recovery rebate credit on your 2020 tax return and get the stimulus payments that you missed out on based on your 2019 income. So think about that. If you have not filed your 2020 and your income was actually lower than 2019 and now you qualify based on these income limits, you can claim your rebate credit in your 2020 tax return. And here's another cool one. Even if you had a baby in 2020 that was not born in 2019, as long as you are under the income levels, you will get a stimulus payment number one and number two for that baby that was not born until 2020 because it's actually a 2020 tax credit, right? For 2021, then you will also get the $1,400 for that baby if you qualify under the income guideline. So that's another planning opportunity. If your income went down and now you qualify, be sure to get your documents together as soon as possible and make sure you file your return so you get what's due to you. Now, I'm going to put in the show notes a link for two things. One is the IRS Where's My Payment tool. So you can basically go to the IRS website. You can go to irs.gov. One of the very first things that you'll see there is get my payment. But I'll put the direct link on the show notes so that you can go in, you can enter some personal information, and the system will tell you um, the status on your payment. So it might tell you when to expect the deposit in your bank account. So that's the other thing. The IRS is going to use the payment method that they use to give you your last stimulus payment or refund. So if you file via direct deposit and you got your refund via direct deposit and you still have the same bank account information, then you're going to get your direct deposit there. If you change bank accounts, and the IRS tries to deposit it in the bank account that is closed, it's going to bounce. And what the IRS will do is then send you a check in the mail. So you want to make sure that you have the most recent bank account information on file. If you don't, uh, as of now, I don't believe there's a way for you to update that. I know with the first and second stimulus payments, there was an option to log in and give the IRS your bank account. If you can't, then the other thing I would recommend, if you moved, et cetera, or, or if you haven't, just Confirm that the address on your 2019 return is, in fact, your most recent address, because if that has changed, you also want to make sure you change your address with the IRS. And I'll put a link to the IRS change of address form as well. So you make sure you get that check. So I'll give you that link where you can check in. So a lot of nice changes coming your way. The other enhancement, aside from direct payments, is also the unemployment benefits that have been extended through September 6th. So if you are or know someone who is claiming unemployment benefits, they will receive $300 a week extra on top of whatever they're already receiving through their state. So you want to make sure that you go to your state and you file your claim so that you get the state unemployment plus the additional $300. And this is extended through September 6th. So it's a pretty nice boost. Another big thing regarding unemployment benefits is that individuals who earn less than $150,000 in 2020 could basically not pay income taxes on up to $10,200 of unemployment benefits. This is huge because traditionally, 
and ironically, right, some people might find that ironic, unemployment benefits are taxable income or can be depending on your overall income, right? Depending on where you fall in your tax bracket. Uh, so this is huge because this change came mid tax season and some people had already filed their tax returns with the unemployment benefits that they received and then pay taxes on that money, right? So if, if that is you, you want to make sure that you amend your tax return so that you're only paying taxes on any amount of unemployment in excess of 10,200. As of the recording of this podcast, the IRS has not released the new forms to be able to do that yet, but just be on the lookout for that, get in touch with your accountant uh, so that they stay on track for that because that's gonna be huge. In essence, you do some money back if you pay taxes on that unemployment, right? So the first $10,200 in unemployment benefits are not taxable. And get this, if you're a couple filing jointly and you both received unemployment, you can double that. uh, $20,400 of unemployment benefits could then be shielded from taxation if you make up to $150,000 in income. So they have that $150,000 income cap. Unfortunately, any amount over 150, it's a 100% phase out. So uh, you would be paying uh, taxes on that unemployment, even if you make $150,001. So this is another planning opportunity because if you're really on that cusp, there might be some ways that you can bring that taxable, that just goes income down, you know? So that's something you want to speak to your tax preparer um, because, you know, you would be doing yourself a favor if somehow you can take advantage of certain tax deductions to bring your income under that 150 so that you don't pay taxes on that unemployment if you could, right? So speak to your tax professional about that. So that is major as well. Another huge thing for families, the child tax credit. So typically the child tax credit has been $2,000 per child under the age of 17. Now, this tax credit, we usually phase out for families earning over 400,000. So this is joint fa- joint filers and single filers making less than 200,000. So that credit has now been raised for 2021 from $2,000 to $3,600 per child under the age of six or $3,000 for any child between the ages of six and 17. So this is huge. This is going from 2000 to either 3,600 if the kids are under six or $3,000 for kids between six and 17. So 50% of this credit is also going to be available as an advanced monthly payment that the IRS is going to start sending out in July. So between July and December, individuals and families are going to start getting an advance on this new credit or, or this extended credit rather uh, for six months. So basically you're going to get half of it up front this year between July and December and the other half you would claim in your 2021 tax return next year. So keep that in mind. Now, if you don't qualify, uh, because unfortunately, they also have phase outs for $75,000 for single filers, $112,500 for head of household, and $150,000 for joint filers for this new $3,600 for kids under six or $3,000 for kids between six and 17. But don't worry, if you still make over that amount, you're still going to be eligible for the traditional $2,000 with the usual phase out, $200,000 for singles, or individuals, 400,000 for couples filing jointly. So another big boost there. Now, uh, health insurance costs, if you lost your health insurance through uh, that you had through your employer and you had to go and buy that in a health exchange, like a marketplace, either the federal or the state, well, now the bill removes all of the income caps on insurance premium tax credits for those who purchase insurance on the federal health exchange or the state marketplace for two years. So that means that the amount you will pay for health insurance will be limited to only eight and a half percent of your income as calculated by the exchange. So that's another boost there. So let me give you a quick recap. I know there's a lot of information. It is $1,400 checks for individuals and families, individuals that make 75,000 or less, joint filers, 150 or less, head of household, 112,500 or less, would then a phase out above those numbers. Going to get Unemployment benefits extended to $300 a week in addition to whatever the state is paying from uh, up until September 6th. Unemployment benefits, the first $10,200 or $20,400 for married couples is not going to be taxable. 
if you earn less than $150,000. So keep that in mind. If you already filed your taxes, you might have to amend them later. Or if you haven't filed, wait, because then um, you want to make sure that you file when the forms are available to not pay taxes on that income. So there's something you want to speak to your tax professional about because there are some planning opportunities here and you don't want to shoot yourself in the foot. A larger tax credit for a child, 3,600 for kids under six, 3,000 for kids between six and 17. If you don't qualify based on the 75,000 for individuals or 150,000 for families, 112,500 for head of household, you could still qualify for the $2,000 for children under age 17, if you make less than 200,000 or less than 400,000 as singles and couples. And half of that credit is now going to be sent as a check by the IRS starting in July, between July and December. Uh, so half of it will be claimed. Basically, you're just gonna get a check in the mail. And in December, in the next year, when you file your 2021 tax return, you get to claim the other half on your taxes. And then the health insurance costs have, uh, could drop on the health exchange marketplace because now they removed the income cap on those insurance premiums. So a lot of information here. Uh, I'm going to put those links for you to check out. Uh, one thing I'm going to do too is um, put the link for get my payment with the IRS so you can track it. And number two, I'm going to put an online calculator just in case you're wondering like how much you're entitled to basically. So it's, uh, you know, not making any promises, but the uh, calculator I'm going to put there should work fairly accurate. So check that out. And if not as well, consult with your tax professional. So thank you very much for tuning in. I know this was a lot, but I appreciate you. Episode 60, visit onmywaytowealth.com. If you have any questions, any suggestions, always feel free to reach out, Luis at onmywaytowealth.com. Thank you for tuning in and I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening to On My Way to Wealth. If you have any questions, please send me an email at luis at onmywaytowealth.com. The information provided here is for information and education purposes only. The opinions expressed herein are solely those of myself, unless otherwise specifically cited. Material presented is believed to be from reliable sources and no representations are made by my firm or myself about other parties' information or accuracy or completeness. All information or ideas provided should be discussed in detail with a financial advisor, accountant, or legal counsel prior to implementation. Thank you.